Okay, here's my new rabbit hole that I'm going down, my new quest for punishment. DJI Light Bridge. I've actually been looking for one of these for a long time for a couple of purposes. For drone purposes, which they were obviously made for. And for water ski purposes, I want to be able to transmit high def video from the boat to shore for spectators over long ranges. So I picked up a couple of these DJI Light Bridge units. And I'm starting off with the ground units because I picked them up cheap on eBay first. I have not got an air unit yet. So that's another stage of this saga coming. So, my first question after I got these things, well, beyond the obvious ones, they turn on and off just like a phantom or something like that does. So, just hitting the power button does not turn them on. It actually just tells you, they've got a built-in battery, so it tells you what the battery level is. And like a phantom, you have to hit the power button once and then hold it to turn it on. And there it is turned on. Okay. Note to self, the antennas, because these are both transmitters and receivers, the antennas must be in place before you turn a unit on, otherwise you can damage some of the electronics inside. So, I had my unit turned on, what can I do with it? Well, I hooked a monitor up, there's obviously an HDMI port, and I got no output. Hmm, nothing at all. Not expected, I don't have an air unit hooked up, I don't have anything connected to it. So, the first question in my mind is, how do you link two of these things together? So I had no idea what I was doing here, so I did some searching online and I found that there is a DJI Lightbridge app that you can run on an Android device. I have Apple devices and so I had to bring out of retirement an old Android tablet I have to run the uh, Android thing. So I installed the DJI Lightbridge app on there and I will show that in a sec. So here's my old and trusty uh, Android tablet with the DJI Lightbridge app on it. Running the DJI Lightbridge app and launch is fairly quick and you'll see connection broken. So I am not connected to the Lightbridge unit. So I have a USB cable plugged into my Android tablet and I will plug that into my Lightbridge unit. which is harder to do one-handed than you would think. And there we go, and it says connection broken. So, this was my... Oh, and it says, uh, do you want to wait? So, touching wait, and it still says connection broken. This was my very first lesson. Cables matter. I have a different USB cable here. I'm plugging it into my tablet. I'm going to get ugly here for a sec. There we go. And after plugging in that cable, we now have a con connection established. So, there's the first thing. Make sure you're using a really good, proper USB cable. Oops. So, now that you're connected to this, what can you do? Well, I can go into settings down here. And there's a bunch of things that you can and cannot do in the settings. Okay, so for example, video source. Go down there and I can change the video source, right? And you'll actually get a message down here that said, Connection established, connection broken. It actually says something to the effect of sending failure, okay? Because that's a setting that you're trying to send up to the air unit. The air unit's not connected. So it turns out you can do a few things just to see whether your um, connection is working or not, okay? Display HDMI OSD. You can change that, and you actually see a message that says setting success at the bottom. So there you have a device that is actually talking to you. So that's how you know your ground unit it does appear to be functioning properly. Now, there's two USB ports. I reversed the cable here, so I've got the micro USB end plugged into the ground unit. 
and I can now plug it into my Windows PC. And when I do that, I actually get a device showing up in device. I plug the ground unit into my PC USB port and I have all the drivers installed. I actually get under a COM port. I get a DJI USB virtual COM port, COM38. So that's how you know you have all the drivers installed. There are drivers for Windows for the DJI Lightbridge that you can download from the DJI site. Make sure you install those and don't try and go further on the Windows machine until it's showing up properly as a virtual COM port. The next thing is install the DJI Lightbridge Assistant for Windows that you can install on Windows and that will communicate with the Lightbridge unit. Okay, this is the DJI Lightbridge Assistant and one of the first things you'll notice is there's a couple of little indicator lights at the bottom. As soon as you plug in and turn on the Lightbridge unit into the USB port, you should actually get a green light and some flashing when there's some communication. And you can now see that I actually have ground system main controller, ground system decoder, and ground system transmitter. And I have firmware version numbers, 119, 148, 120. Um, I have a second unit that only the first one came up with the number, the other two did not. And if that's the situation, then it, my understanding is the NAND flash on the ground unit has lost its contents and you need to reflash it. You look at the status lights on the ground unit when it is hooked up to the Windows PC communicating with the assistant your lights end up or your battery and lights end up on solid. Double pressing the power button results in some flashing for a second. Not sure what that is yet, but I'll figure that out. Here is the inside of a DJI Lightbridge ground unit. And in particular this one, when I connected up to the PC with the Windows DJI Lightbridge Assistant, gave me a firmware number for the first ground station component, but not for the second and third. And my understanding is I need to reflash that, and in order to do so, over here on the left hand side, there's transmit, receive, and ground, which I need to hook up to an FTDI uh, adapter, a USB one, and there is a B select and 3.3 volts over there that I have to short together to um, get it to reset and go into a bootloader mode. So I am about to hook up, solder up onto these little pads, some wires to an FTDI adapter. The first step in soldering wires to these is to actually use your soldering iron carefully to tin those little dots. So that's what I've done. I've just tinned them right now. This is an FTDI adapter. I picked it up on eBay. I'll put a link in the uh, description. And you'll notice it actually has a jumper on it for 5 volt and 3.3 volts. And since this board has that marking that says 3V3, I'm going to assume 3.3 volts and we'll go from there. And so I set my jumper to 3.3 volts. The only connections I have made here are the ground, RX, and TX. So, let me backtrack a little bit, did some more reading of that thread that's posted on the Phantom Units. And they indicate that the TX pin on here, on the Lightbridge ground unit, is where the Lightbridge receives signal. So it should actually connect to the TX pin on your FTDI adapter. So, TX to TX, RX to RX, I was wrong. So, in order to use a, an FTDI adapter on a PC, which is a UST to logic level, TTL logic level uh, adapter, what you need to do is determine which COM port it ends up plugged into. No, no use going ahead if you don't have the drivers properly installed for this and it doesn't show up as a COM port. So, take your adapter, plug it into your PC, into your USB port, and have the device manager up and running and watch in the common LPT ports and you should see it show up so this my I do have the drivers correctly installed and we're having a focus
surface issue. You can see it has shown up there as COM6 as a COM port. So that's the port that I need to use whenever I'm entering in the COM port of the ground unit. First thing I want to do is actually see whether I'm communicating with the board using the FTDI board and I'm using a freeware putty utility. So there I have it set for COM6 115200 is a speed and serial and then I will click on the open. Okay, so now that I have the TX to TX and RX to RX on the FTDI, I'm going to power it on and see what I get on my putty terminal window. And there we go, we get messages as we're supposed to. So you can see what we have here is aborting, NAND boot failed. So there's the message I get and that tells me that it is having problem booting from the NAND and I do need to flash things. So um, I'm really just using the putty, uh, putty terminal window just to make sure that I have proper communication through my FTDI and I do so now I can move on to the article description of flashing it using the utility. So there is a Phantom Pilots page that a thread that talks about the Lightbridge firmware problem and solution and this has to do with reflashing it and in that link where in that uh, thread on the Phantom Pilots page includes instructions and links to everything that's needed to do what I'm about to do. So I downloaded the lb underscore hack dot zip file that is linked to in the Phantom Pilots web link and I will unzip that for all of the information that I Extracting the zip file gives me a bunch of folders containing older components and the two files that I need and the utility, the sfh underscore dm36x.exe so there's the two, uh, two image files that I need and the utility that I need to do the flash. Okay so here I'm about to flash it and I've got the flash command up in the window there. Now the key is you have to power on the ground unit with the B select and the 3.3 volts shorted together. And when you do that, then it should start flashing. As soon as I can find the power button underneath. And I hit enter, and it starts the flashing. And then, as the instructions say, it goes into this boot me mode. And all you do is just hit any key which terminates the program and then you up arrow and get rid of that dialog window just back to my command prompt up arrow and hit the same command again and it'll do what it looks like is redoing the exact same thing again, but this time it actually finishes the process and goes through and boots the second or uh, burns the second half of the NAND flash. Alright, it's about to finish. Let's see what it does here. Okay, so it says it is completed successfully. The is, is the putty program again hooked up to monitor and see what comes out of the board now that I flashed it. Before it said the NAND flash failed abort. And now it goes through a full long boot process so we actually have a functioning Lightbridge ground unit. So this has been a success. Now that I have it booted up, I am plugging in the micro USB connector onto my board here to see whether it is talking to me. And we now have a green light connected and we have 
1.19 in the first ground component and the other two populated 1.47 and we'll actually see it'll do some checking right now and I believe it'll come up with update available for the ground system uh, decoder because I believe 1.4.8 is the latest version so now it has come up and said that 1.4.7 newer version is available. I actually had to stop the uh, Lightbridge assistant and start it with the uh, uh, Lightbridge ground unit already connected before I got this message. And when I do the new version available, it downloads it and I can choose upgrade. Do you really want to flash it? Yes, don't power off when doing this and it will actually start the process and upgrade to 1.4.8 and you'll notice the progress bar is crawling along this is about a 10 or 15 minute process okay I have successfully done the firmware upgrade took about 10 minutes and now I have ground system at 1.19 1.1.9 ground system decoder at 1.4.8 and ground system transmitter at 1.2.0. I needed to power cycle the ground unit and restart the Lightbridge Assistant program to get all these to display correctly, but it seems happy now.